Tensions are rising between Turkey and Syria over the mortar shelling suspected to have been carried out by rebels that killed five civilians almost a week ago. In financial terms, this is having an effect on the markets, most noticeably in commodities where oil prices jumped amidst concerns over future supplies. Well, on the line from the London School of Economics is Professor Eric Neumeyer, who's been following the recent clash between Turkey and Syria. Eric, thanks very much for joining me today. Uh, now, we know there are tensions between Syria and its neighbours, and in this case, Turkey. What could we see happening to the supply of oil if this current situation on the Turkish-Syrian border isn't brought under control soon? What happened is that the conflict that was sort of informally internationalized before, because we know that states supply weapons both to the Syrian regime and the rebels, became formally sort of internationalized when uh, Turkey uh, started retaliating onto Syria. Now, in principle, this could become a regional conflict where, say, Saudi Arabia on the one hand and Iran on the other with their respective allies we're in armed conflict. If that were to happen, then of course the price of oil would go through the roof. Syria is in the midst of what looks like a civil war and it was almost inevitable the violence was going to spill over the border. Yet with one shell landing on Turkish soil, Turkey fired back at Syria for something like six days in a row. If Turkey wants to quell this violence, why the overbearing force? Well, it's a, it's a difficult uh, situation. It's a difficult question to answer because it's not quite clear why Turkey reacts so harshly, if, if you like. I mean, it's very clear that Turkey has a problem with this conflict. There are a lot of refugees coming over, into, over the border into Turkey. Turkey has long since had uh, a stance, a clear stance against the regime in Syria. Um, why they are reacting now so harshly, I honestly don't know. I mean, anyone who's been to Turkey knows it's a very um, proud nationalist uh, country. And I think it, it took that as, a, as an insult as well, as a sort of an offensive uh, uh, act of aggression that had to be uh, retaliated. Uh, now, NATO quite clearly does not want to be dragged into uh, this conflict. And I think it is probably fair to say that unless uh, more comes from the Syrian side, uh, I think this will probably, um, you know, fade away at some stage. Now, Turkish bonds have experienced an 11-point rally in the last 30 days, and we've seen Brent crude on the rise as well. All these factors have noticeably affected the markets. What other impact could these growing tensions have on the financial world as a whole? Well, I think if there was a internationalization of the conflict, this would have tremendous effects on stock bond markets and, and others. Uh, we know that the markets are um, already in, let's call it turmoil, with the lingering euro crisis, the financial crisis, the economic uh, crisis. If we had a political crisis, cum armed conflict with internationalization, uh, you would see uh, markets tumbling all over the world. So this is clearly something that is of global concern. And finally, Eric, where does Turkey and the international community go from here, do you think? It's very difficult to say what will happen. I think a, a full internationalization of the conflict is unlikely. States are very hesitant to be dragged uh, into uh, this, both on the Western side and on the side uh, of, uh, say, the Iranians or Hezbollah in, in Lebanon. I mean, officially. They are, of course, unofficially, informally there, as I said before. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think we will see full-scale civil war in, in Syria. Maybe at some point uh, the Assad regime will tumble. It's very hard to know. The longer it lingers, and if it sort of gets in any way connected to the lingering crisis with respect to the... Uh, nuclear situation in Iran, then this could have tremendous effects on both oil and financial markets in the future. OK, that's all we've got time for today. Thanks, Eric, for that brief analysis on the current tensions between Turkey and Syria. I'll be back tomorrow for a look at the latest economic news for Australia. But until then, goodbye.